Jurassi, a Jewish emigre from Vienna who settled in the US, is best known for developing the contraceptive pill in Mexico in the early 1950s. Now celebrating his 90th birthday and with a new autobiography on his wide-ranging life, he has many insights into the science of human reproduction. After a distinguished career in chemistry, he became increasingly interested in the morality of science, writing novels and plays about it later in his life. The appreciation eventually in, in the 1960s of the social implication and the fact that one has to address not what I call the hardware of contraception, which are pills or uh, IUDs or <clears throat> diaphragms, but the software, the cultural, economic, political, religious, psychological aspects, completely influenced my teaching. And I then moved as a chemistry professor at Stanford into one of the first ones to teach in human biology and teach policy courses, and then moving into feminist studies. I mean, if people think I'm a pill pusher and say the pill is the answer for everything, uh, they're completely mistaken. I thought this was a dramatic change, basically from condoms to pills within 10 years, and therefore would be the beginning of an explosion of many different areas of birth control. First of all, where the pill for men? Uh, I have a question of what women have asked for a long time, but also what about women who do not want to take uh, hormonal, contraceptive, something else. There would be many areas of research you could have. None of this was in the end uh, consummated. The pharmaceutical industry, he says, was scared off by potential lawsuits over side effects. And research on different forms of contraception wound down as companies focused instead on more lucrative fields such as arthritis and diabetes, cancer and cardiovascular disease. Meanwhile, other scientists were working on conception, succeeding with IVF, sperm preservation, storing fertilized embryos, and most recently, managing to freeze, store, and thaw unfertilized eggs. Then come the question of unfertilized eggs. And that, of course, would be the most important one. It was the most difficult thing. And I won't belabor the technical problems, but it took uh, probably a period of nearly 10 years. But that has essentially been solved uh, probably around 2010 to the extent that there are quite a number of clinics now throughout the world that actually advertise a service that if a young, youngish woman, meaning preferably one in their 20s, goes through a course of superovulation, producing half a dozen or a dozen eggs, young eggs, that they can freeze them, freeze them for years, and then as insurance, so if a woman postpones childbearing until the late 30s or early 40s, a very dangerous age, she can use her own early uh, young eggs. He believes that women in good health up to their mid-40s could have their young eggs implanted successfully. And he thinks the logical outcome in years to come is a complete break between reproduction and sex. Whether they actually will use their frozen eggs is an open question. They have their choice. They can, if a woman frees their eggs at age 25 and at age 33 she wants to have a child, she most likely will do it through ordinary intercourse. If that woman postponed until 38, she would be much wiser to use her own young egg, in which case she'd use in vitro rather than ordinary coitus. And so the separation between sex and reproduction is in fact de facto in Europe total. So why not go the logical extreme and say, okay, if you want to have a child, one or two children, have it by the best uh, artificial means and the hundreds of times when you have sexual intercourse, you have it for a reason of love and curiosity and fun and lust and whatever, whatever the reasons are for, uh, for, for sex. And that I think, and if you do that, you can go one step further. Now I wouldn't say this will happen now, but I predict by 2050, if I'm a young woman and I store my own eggs, young eggs, I would then get sterilized at that point. Why would I need contraception? Because I, when I want my child, I'll do it that way, the in vitro way. When I have sex, I'll do it the usual way. 
and he believes advances in genomic research will add further support to this controversial view. The motivation is not just that a modern method or that I can have good insurance, but they're forgetting one other thing, the enormous increase in genomic research, which had nothing to do with reproductive medicine. That was parallel, uh, tremendous on the human genome and so on, which enables us now to analyze with one cell, one individual cell, uh, you know, genetic, uh, uh, all genetic problems or the entire genome. But, you know, you can say whether you have Down syndrome, whether you have preponderance for some uh, predisposition for some cancers, etc., uh, etc. Et and that is uh, for people who have only one or two children, will be a great incentive. They have several embryos and they'll analyze them first and pick the one which does not have uh, genetic markers for that. That is not genetic modification in the context that people say uh, you're now playing around with a form of eugenics in which you insert new, make more intelligent children or blue-eyed blonde uh, giants or something like that. So, does Carl Gerasi support the Silicon Valley companies like Facebook? which are beginning to offer young female employees up to $20,000 each for egg freezing. Entirely, for the simple reason that people forget that what we have, what we have just been talking about are options. A woman should be entitled to the option of selecting this. And if she wants to do this for her own private reasons, it's no one else's business except maybe her partner, or perhaps even sometimes members of the intimate family, uh, it's a decision between her professional life and her home life and child life, whether she even has a partner and so on here. These are decisions which only women can make. And the problem is that option right now is greatly reduced for financial reasons because the super ovulation which you have to start with and the subsequent freezing of eggs is currently quite expensive. It's a few thousand, depends where you are, but it's... In the United States, of course, is usually the most expensive of them all, but <clears throat> and, and they offer up to $20,000, which is a lot of money for that, to, uh, and would cover everything. Uh, I found this uh, very enlightening, uh, enlightened, and uh, that uh, some women will take advantage of it, and they're entitled to it. So, the man who invented the contraceptive pill is today focusing on conception, as science becomes ever more a part of human reproduction. Clive Cookson, Financial Times, London.